David, this was meant to be a comparison between the Type R Honda and the GR Corolla, but sadly, the GR Corolla didn't make it. Tune in to see what happened. The GR Corolla. What did you do to it, Ellen? What did I do? You may well ask. Look, here's some pictures. This is what happened. I drove it to my place uh, and then from my place out to the highway where you see it now. And uh, <laughs> the clutch, she's a no work. She's yeah. a no work. Do you think that perhaps some of the lads might have well, given it look, a bit of Here's a... the thing. The, the GR Corolla and this Type R, they were launched around the same time-ish and funnily enough had almost the same number of kilometres on them. This had, a, at last week, had 72, uh, 100 kilometres. The, I think the GR had about 71 or thereabouts 100 kilometres. As far as looks goes, I think the two cars are within Kui. The Type R's got this nice, low, aggressive looking front, which actually even the non-Type R Civic has. The GR Corolla, that's a different kettle of fish. That's, that's quite modified from the normal Corolla. Yes, it is, but it hasn't gone over the top. See, the arches are quite wide, the track's quite wide, and of course, it's fairly heavily modified. Both of these cars, the reason why you pay what you pay is what's underneath, what's in the engine, what's under the skin, the bracing, the extra welding, and so forth. So it's Handling. built into the DNA. For the time being, there's just a couple of little things that give this away. First of all, we've got the Type R marking and, of course, on the Corolla, the GR marking. There's a couple of little vents here on the bonnet. They go through to the engine compartment. All of these cars, all of the things that you see on them, actually do something. And this model actually is a little bit downplayed compared to the bling of the previous model. Not too very much. much. Very but much. This has it here, whereas the previous model had the sort of uh, yeah. WRX. Well, sort what of. they've done, David, is they've knocked the hard edges off the previous model generally to give the new model Civic uh, a little bit of a, a classier edge. The price for this is fixed. Honda has an agency model, so Honda own all of the cars at the dealerships, all of the demonstrators, all of the press cars, all of the stock. All the dealer does is service it and do the deliveries so they don't have to worry about that expense. It also means that the one drive away price of 72,600, which is a lot of money, is fixed no matter what state you're in, no matter what, that's the drive away price. The Corolla, that's a different kettle of fish, David. 62,300 plus on-road costs. And I think you would point out, Alan, that's the recommended retail price. If they're hard to get, who says that someone well, might want to charge you a bit more? David points out something very interesting, and that is that the GR Corolla's 62 and some change turns into about 69 and some change once you add the on-roads. According to Toyota's website, the on-road driveway price in New South Wales. However, a friend of mine in Victoria went in, he's currently looking for a car, and he went into the Toyota showroom to have a look at a GR Corolla, and they quoted him David, 76,000, so 4,000 more than this, drive away. So we get now onto the kilowatts, which David are. For the Type R, it is 235 kilowatts A and lot. 420 newton, newton meters. meters. And for the Corolla, it's a little less. It's 221 for the kilowatts and 370 for the newton meters. And also, the GR Corolla has a three cylinder turbo, and the Type R has a four cylinder, four -cylinder turbo. Two litre, the Corolla is 1.6. Now, the other interesting thing, David, is as you pointed out before, this is just a two wheel drive. This is just a front wheel drive, so 235 through the front wheels. That's quite a lot. Actually, you feel it. You do. But that's the only time <laughs> that you feel the rest of the time it's just magic. We'll get onto that in a tech. Come have a look at the back. The only hint around the back of the car is this rather huge diffuser dash downforce pusher downer so forth. Yeah, and the Type R badge. The GR Corolla is a trifle more subtle, 
but it's much, much wider. Like it just, it's, it looks really huge. It looks like the car melted down over the wheels. Again, this is where this later model is a little more subdued, still big than it was before. Yeah, inside the boot, you can see that there are the mountings there for a spare wheel. You'd be able to fit a spare tire in there, but there's nothing but the kit. David, there's quite a lot of room in the back. You're not a short man by any means. Plenty of leg room and knee room here, a little bit cramped under the feet. I could probably raise that seat, do you think? And you've got a couple of cup holders in the middle, which of course this is a four-seater. Four-seater. There's a marked absence of technology. Well, there's no vents, no outlets, not even a little cubby hole. But there is Type R on the back of the seats, which I think oh, is kind of go. cool. And this upholster, I think, is just gorgeous. The front seats, of course, are covered in red. All right, David. Oh, digital dash, you'll notice. Both of them have digital dashes. Yeah. Both of them have little uh, tablet-style infotainment systems. But the GR Corolla has a head-up display. Ah, that is yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah. But uh, David's not coming with me. You're, uh, you're parking up. <laughs> I value my life. I saw what you did to the Corolla. <laughs> he didn't see what I did to the <laughs> See ya. See ya. So the upshot of that is a nice quick takeoff. And that's the only time that you really notice the difference between this and the GR Corolla. On the highway on this noisy cement surface, concrete surface, you can, you can hear that there is a little bit of noise in the cabin. The Corolla, a little bit more. And that's the other thing that I like about this is that you can have the active steering on but not the active cruise control, whereas in GR Corolla, you've got to turn it all on. We're now heading into the mountains and you know this is my favorite bit of road. This rev matches regardless, it's built in. Whereas with the GR Corolla, you've got to turn on the IM or intelligent manual. It is just superb. And the thing about this is that it feels properly stuck to the road. These corners, it's taking like it's, like it's a wild mouse. Just sticks to the road. It does have particularly sticky tires. So that certainly helps. There's no hint of misbehavior. This is just beautiful, elegant, poised control. Now, even though it's in sports mode and you can hear in my voice that I'm feeling every single bump, it's able to take these bends brilliantly. There's no doubt in my mind that it is too firm for city use. There's this weird little split in the front seats. It doesn't go all the way through. At first I thought it for a racing harness that, you know, maybe you could get a racing harness installed, but I think it's just so that um, when you're changing gears, if you put your thigh down on one side of the seat it doesn't affect the other but let's put it into sport now I can really feel the front wheels scrambling for grip when I take off and that's the one thing that you don't notice with the GR because it is all-wheel drive the steering is nice and weighted in both cars and it was so close to try and pick the winner that I sat down with a, a score sheet. The Honda one for things like interior. We think this had a, a slightly nicer interior, a slightly nicer quality than the Toyota, but the Toyota was still very good. And the Honda also won on comfort, that the seats were just that little more comfortable. The Honda won it for gear changes too, just 
because it's so slick. And I think also the rev matching down, so that's rev match down, rev match down again. Corolla and Civic have always gone head to head, in my view, for looks and charm and personality. And even mostly for the drive. David, that's it. It's not much of a comparison and certainly not the test we hope we do. No. But I've got to say, I think it's, it's a little bit chalk and cheese. I think this is a wonderful sporty car, whereas I think the Corolla is a commodity more yeah, with yeah. A, a little bit more bling and performance and, you know, all-wheel drive is great, but it's noisy and it's... This, uh, this well, I prefer. I think it's like the Turin Edgerton. Uh, a metaphor that I used earlier in that movie Kingsman he goes in as a backward cap wearing Cockney and comes out looking like um, a young James Bond and I think that's the Cockney this is the James Bond but it's gotten around to that time David so hit like or leave a comment or both and uh, over there to subscribe <laughs>